Hello and welcome to Audio Tree Live. Today is Thursday, April 11th, 2019, and we are very excited to have many rooms in the studio with us today. Take it away when you're ready. And 
Thanks. <laughs> You're watching out each live with many rooms. That was incredible. Thank you. Oh my god. Um, I love your shirt. Thanks. By the way, did you just get it? I saw on Twitter. Yeah, I was in uh, Arizona. Yeah. I think we were in Phoenix. Nice. And there's like a thrift store next door to the venue, mm -hmm. and I saw it and I was like. Ugh. I have to get it because I have the new moon shirt. So I was like, I, okay. have, I need the whole set. Yeah, you can get the eclipse next. Yeah, hopefully. That's just the, that's just the twilight, right? Yeah, this is the OG. Oh, the OG twilight. Nice. Yeah. Team Edward, <laughs> Team Jacob. Edward. Yeah. Okay. Just kind of yeah. Yeah. Fair. <laughs> um, yeah. So the the chat is popping off on the internet right now. A certain Mike E is very excited to see you guys here. He said, "Matt on drums is a babe." <laughs> He's very excited. Is he wrong? He's not. Is he yeah. lying? <laughs> um, so switching gears a little bit, I wanted to talk to you about um, just like a religion. So I was listening to your album, and from the title even, there's a presence here. Um, I'm just wondering, like, uh, do you see your music as an outlet to express your religious uh, feelings and spirituality? Absolutely. Yeah? Yeah. Do you, um, yeah. <laughs> do you consider yourself a Christian artist or a religious um, artist? I, I hate the, I don't know, I feel weird about that label yeah. because it kind of like pigeonholes you mm -hmm. whenever you're, uh, you know, just trying to talk about things that mean something to you. Yeah. Um, and it usually, you know, a lot of the time it goes back to spirituality because it's just been a big part of my life. Yeah. But um, I don't really like being called like a Christian artist or like, you know, or spiritual artist because I feel like, you know, my yeah. opinion is subject to change constantly. Yeah. So like... I mean, I'm pretty confident in what I believe, yeah. but I never know. You know, you know, you never know if later on down, down the years, you know, your feelings are going to change about something. Yeah. So. Especially because when in your lyrics, it's you're you're talking just about like existing and being a person and whether or not there is or your belief in a higher being. It's not so much like rooted in scripture so much. Mm -hmm. That's based on my understanding of it. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm really interested in how you navigate the music industry, which to me I interpret as like a relatively like maybe atheist or agnostic world, and I might be mm -hmm. wrong, but how do you navigate that as a person who is religious or spiritual? Um, I mean, I feel more comfortable in it because, yeah. you know, like I don't think me being a religious person means that I should only surround myself with religious people. Mm -hmm. I think that that gives you no room to change or grow. Yeah. Um, my label actually is uh, two guys who definitely hate religion and don't believe in anything like, mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's an interesting dynamic, the two of us, Yeah. because all of my stuff is, you know, pretty heavily influenced by spirituality. Yeah. Um, Do you guys get into, get into it ever? We have before. Yeah. Yeah. Like we were on tour um, they have a band called Tradewind. I was mm -hmm. actually in here with them yeah. last time I was here. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I was on tour with them, and uh, every day they would just be like, "Do you really believe like that? There was a there was a huge arc, and there was like a huge flood, and it had all of the animals." And I was like, "I don't, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I believe that. And I didn't really think about it till now." <laughs> but yeah, it was just like them grilling me about things that I didn't know about the Bible, and like making me think. So it's a good thing. Like, I, I'm really appreciative of them being in my life because, like, yeah. it, they've made me, you know, look at myself and and be more self-aware and, like, take more chances to educate myself on things that I don't know instead of, you know, doing the typical, like, Western Christian thing and, like, just mm -hmm. kind of being ignorant and choosing that ignorance because it's more comfortable than yeah. doing the hard thing, you know? Yeah, and I, I think that that is... Um, an incredible mindset to have, especially when you're probably con and like you, like you just said, you're constantly faced with people who are going to be like, "Do you really believe X or this or yeah. something?" And constantly sort of just challenging you on it. Yeah. Do you ever like come back to them and like maybe challenge them a little bit? Um, I'm kind of a non-confrontational person, mm -hmm. um, so like in the moment, it's hard for me to like think about like, "Oh, I should have said this." Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm so I bad totally about it. You. I like five minutes later, I'm like, "Oh man, I should have." Yeah, I should have said that. But sometimes, like, I mean, if if I'm feeling like, mm -hmm. I don't know, particularly snippy, <laughs> um, I can, uh, I can like, I don't fire. I try not to fire back. I try not to be like, yeah, aggressive with people. But yeah. I just, yeah, I like open discussions and like yeah. asking questions. So um, I try. I try my best. <laughs> yeah. To to be like a kind of person who's who's uh, 
available for people to feel like they can say whatever to. Yeah. You know, I think that's, I think that's a really great mindset and attitude to have. And I think that, I, I don't know. I, I, I am, I, I'm personal. This is a very personal thing, but like I'm very like personally, like, interested in spirituality and religion and having a presence like having a um having a spiritual presence and having a spiritual uh mindset in the music industry is a very cool and good thing to me because I feel like sometimes in 2019 it's easy to say I don't know Mm -hmm. it's easy to say that there's nothing or Mm -hmm. something and I think I don't know I, I, if we were off camera, I promise I could have been more eloquent about that. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> but anyway. No, I totally understand. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it feels hard sometimes, like, being spiritual or, mm-hmm. you know, religious or faith-based, um, just because, you know, I'm surrounded by people who are not, and I don't want them to feel separated from me in any way. Yeah. Like, I don't want people to think that I'm, like, I don't know, just like this, uh-huh. I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> just, like, untouchable, like person because i know like a lot of people know christians as being like judgy and yeah it's and tied up in morality or yeah something. and yeah. i'm terrified of coming off that way yeah. so like um i feel like a i feel like a loner sometimes yeah <laughs> but also like yeah it is it feels too easy for me to just believe in nothing so i'm that's uh kind of where i'm at right now is i don't know everything but yeah it's it's nice to think about you know? i agree yeah. Yeah. This is a really interesting topic to me. Yeah. And thank you for talking thank to me you. about it. Yeah, of course. All right. <laughs> I'm excited to hear your next few songs. Cool.
sorry. <laughs> no, it's totally fine. <laughs> I totally understand. This is usually when I talk during the set. And what do you usually say? Babble about, uh, well, this next song is old. Like It's uh, off the old EP mm-hmm. called Hollow Body. Mm-hmm. Um, the song's called Hollow Body. And I usually talk about how um, I didn't know what depression was when I was like 17, 18. Mm-hmm. And so um, I kind of... Did you write this when you were 17, 18? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was like me trying to process what I was feeling and not knowing that it was depression. So I kind of oh. labeled it as hollow body. Uh, um, it's a very apt yeah. <laughs> description. Yeah. So that's usually what I talk about when I'm tuning. But mm-hmm. now I'm done. All so. right.
Watching Audio Tree Live with many rooms. Oh man, that's so good. Do you see me bump my head? <laughs> <laughs> One time I was 
performing and I hit my glasses on the mic and oh. it, it was it was rough. Yeah. I understand the feeling. The um, first show I dropped my my guitar on stage. The first show of this tour, <laughs> it just like the strap came off and it was just it fell. Was it during a song? No, I was talking. Okay. Thankfully, yeah. Yeah. Still weird though. That happens to me when I'm practicing and I'm like, what if this happens? Yeah, it's terrifying. Yeah, how do you? It's like also like, what if you get the hiccups on stage? Oh my god. Dude, my worst nightmare. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know how you'd be like. Can you give me five minutes as I hold my breath for like twenty second increments? Yeah, and it only works at like the sixth time I try. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so I want to talk to you about songwriting okay. because your songwriting is incredible and Thank it's you. and it's like incredibly raw and I don't know how you're able to. So I guess I'm gonna phrase this in a question. Um, how are you able to take such huge feelings? And put them in three minute context. I couldn't tell you. Yeah. <laughs> I really don't know. Yeah. Every time it happens, I'm like, okay, well, yeah. I'm I still got it, I guess. Yeah. Like, it's weird. Um I feel like I don't have it in me most time most of the time, mm -hmm. like throughout the year. You know, I, I I usually feel like it's like really inspired by something I'm going through emotionally to mm -hmm. like write a song. And all the other times I'm like kind of trying you know to write yeah it's just a very rare thing and it I think I mean that's one of the what's one of those reasons why I'm I'm a spiritual person because I I just don't feel like it comes from me like yeah. it just doesn't feel like that was just in my head and mine alone you know mm -hmm. it feels like I'm I don't want to get too weird but it feels like I'm tapping into something like like this just this river like yeah that I just kind of reached into and yeah. grabbed something out of it like this, I don't know, this flow of not energy, but like mm -hmm. just life. I don't know. No, I, I totally <laughs> this get sounds it. sounds kind of weird. <laughs> no, I, I totally understand what you're saying. Yeah. It um, just, it feels like I definitely pulled it from something else. Yeah. Yeah. And I, so you said that you, so I guess this ties back into what you're just saying of you only write when you feel like you need to. Um, I've tried to get better about that lately mm -hmm. because I think that um, you know, as someone who's trying to do a career with music, um, That's I need my follow up to, question. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I need to be better about like making myself sit down and try to try things, you know? Yeah. Um, cause there, I, I have a lot of really good songs that come from just like experimenting and just trying yeah. new things. Um, so I've been trying to get in the practice of like every day, just writing down something. Yeah. Um, cause it's just not sustainable to wait like twice a year for yeah. a song to pop up if even then like yeah it's ter it's a terrifying thing to rely on because you have no idea if it's ever going to come again you know yeah and your brain goes to like should i just like force myself to go through some weird yeah. shit uh, so it's like that i can like get a song out of it it's like i have yeah. to i have to ruin my life i guess yeah in order to feel something <laughs> yeah no yeah that's why I, that's another reason why i want to like be better about you know getting in the practice of writing is um I don't want to rely on those feelings. Like I don't want to rely on sadness or mm -hmm. um, something overwhelming happening, you know, for me to have to find creativity. I think that's kind of, it's too easy, you know, mm -hmm. it's a little too easy. Yeah. And that um, shouldn't be easy. Yeah. Uh, so were the songs on, um, there's a presence here written over the course of a long time then? Uh, yeah. Um, there are a few songs that like I wrote two, three years before, that time mm -hmm. and then a few songs that we wrote in the studio cool so it was just like three kind of like three years of work yeah and then like two weeks of work yeah <laughs> and one record yeah, yeah it's weird is it weird to be singing songs from your 17 year old self especially when they're so personal um it's not I guess I feel I guess I like kind of disconnected from them mm -hmm. so I don't really feel anything as much as much anymore yeah. <laughs> like sometimes I'll I'll think about like I'll actually think about the song while I'm playing it and I'm like oh damn this brings me back to like how I was feeling during this time when I wrote this I yeah. like that though yeah I, th like I think capsule. it's like a yeah someone I interviewed a while ago said it was like a record is like a museum of somebody's like life mm -hmm. like you're seeing them project their life onto you on onto like you know yeah uh, walls for you to see them yeah and I was like that's a really good way of explaining it it's yeah. like going back and looking at you know pictures yeah. Or moments frozen in time from, you know, a long time ago. And it's just, it's always nostalgic. Yeah. And, yeah, I like that. I really like that. Yeah. It's it, my favorite thing about it. Yeah. You can have this image of, like, all these projections of all your memories. Yeah. Yeah. I really like that a lot. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for having us. You're great. It's been great. Thank you guys so much. 
Um, I'm excited to hear your last song. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> if I can, uh, I've been tuning this whole time, but for some reason, I just. The ability to talk and tune at the same time is like a. V- Dude, why is, is it so hard? It's the hardest thing I don't of all understand. time. I'm like, suddenly I don't know what standard tuning is, yeah. what anything else is. Okay, I think I got it. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. 
Poetry Live with Many Rooms. Thank you guys so, so much for being here. Thank you. It was so incredible. Much. Um, there is a presence here is out now on Other People Records, and they have show tonight with Copeland and From Indian, Indian Lakes at Bottom Lounge if you're in Chicago. And tour is for one more week, right, with them? Just about. Yeah. yeah. Uh, days, so, something like that. Yeah. So go to their socials at Many Rooms Music to see what is up there. Um, thank you guys for being here. Thank you to the camera and lighting crew. Thank you to the sound engineers and Keelan and Ellie back there. And thank you so much for watching. You can support us and the band by downloading the session when it comes out in a few weeks. And this will be available on all streaming services, Spotify, Apple Music and Bandcamp, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Bye. All right. So you guys want to do it for real now?